So now we are ready to write some code. All right, so let's go ahead and click here and click to our view controller code there and then click on the assistant editor there. So we have both, look back, back to main storyboard. That way we have both our storyboard and our code. So let's hide our left. Before we go, let's click on this image view here and to the right, let's go click on hidden. We wanna make sure that's hidden. Let's do the same, our image view, second image view there. So those are two hidden. Okay, let's go ahead and close that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, so we're gonna go ahead and start connecting our user interface with our code here. So we go ahead and control and drag right underneath there. This is an outlet. Let's call this puppy image view. So the type is image view, obviously, because it's an image view. Just go ahead and say connect. We now have our puppy image view, which is of type image view, which is connected to our image view here in our user interface. Let's do the same to our next image view. So control and drag and drop there. We're gonna call this kitty image view. All the same, connect, space there. So we have it all in one place. Great, so now let's go ahead and take this show cuteness button here and connect there too. So we're gonna go ahead and say control and drop. We're gonna create an action for our show cuteness. For type, we're gonna change to UI button and we're gonna call this show cute cuteness pressed. Say connect and there it is. So this show cuteness uh, once it's clicked, all whatever it's inside here will be called when users click and I'll show cuteness here. Okay, let's do the same to our hide cuteness. So control. Now for our hide cuteness, we're gonna have an outlet first, which is a way for us to uh, connect to the button itself. Okay, so we're gonna call this hide cuteness button. Say connect. And we will also have an action attached to this. So go ahead and do the same here. Instead of outlet, make sure it's an action. Click on that. Let's put a UI button there. And we're going to call this hide cuteness pressed. Perfect. So connect. Great. So let's go ahead and get all of our methods to be at the bottom here. So it's more for organization purposes here. So we have all of our instance variables here, or all of our variables or connectors to our user interface at the top and at the bottom we have our methods or functions. That's good, space there. We want to be able so when users click show cuteness, these two images here are unhidden, so they are now shown, they will be showing. As we unhid them, we also want to add those images. So it's gonna be an image, image of a dog, a puppy, and of a cat, a kitty. All right, so now let's start with the show cuteness. For inside of show cuteness, what are we gonna do? Because we've said before, let's go back here, we said that this, let's click on one of these views here, image views, so we click on that image view, and we go to our attribute inspector. We said here, if you go back here, this hidden here is a Boolean, which means it either can be true or false. With that information, we know that we can test whether this is true or false, whether this is hidden or not hidden. So with that information, what we can do, let's go to close down here, inside of our show cuteness, what we can do first, we can say if kitty image dot hidden, as you can see, we are able to access this, this property here of our kitty image, just as we did when we were using our storyboard. All right, you see the connection now? So if kitty image is hidden, we know that it returns either true, so this here, it would return either true or false. So say shift and the backslash key or puppy image dot hidden, then we want to run something, a space there. Perfect. So here we are essentially saying if kitty image that hidden is true or puppy image view that hidden is also true, then we want to do something here, right? So it's checking if those are not showing, which is the first state, then what we wanna do, we're gonna go ahead and say kitty image view dot hidden is equal to false. So now we are showing it. So we're saying that instead of being hidden, we want it to be to be shown. And we're gonna also show the puppy image view that hidden is equal 
example false as well. And then what we need to do is to access these views again, because now we have unhidden those. So we have shown them now, but they have nothing in them. Now we, we want to be able to go and actually fetch the images like the cat and puppy images and show them, right? So what do we do here? We say kitty image view dot image. That's the property we want to change is equal here. Now here, what we're going to do, we are going to call a class called UI image. We'll talk more about classes later, but this class here is responsible for retrieving and doing things with images. In this case, we want going to say UI image open parentheses. And as you can see, we have here code completion. It says name, so say enter. Now we need to enter the actual name of the image. In this case, it's going to be cat. And notice this name here has to be exactly the same name we have in our image assets here, right? It says cat. It has to be exactly the same for this to work. So now we have our cat showing and let's do the same with our puppy. So say puppy image view dot image is equal to UI image class and say name, say enter. And now we're going to call this puppy because it's, it's exactly the same as the image. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and run this right now here and make sure it's actually working. So say save and run. So there it is. So again, you see we have a show cuteness, hide cuteness. So everything is hidden because that's what those are the settings that we set up. Okay. So let's say show and there it is. We have our puppy and we have our cat. Of course, our hide cuteness is not working because we haven't set up anything here. So now you can see instead of having to use our storyboard to add these images, now we have the power to do everything in code. And you notice all of these properties here, like such as kitty image view dot hidden, those are the same properties that we can set inside of our, let me show you here, inside of our storyboard here. So if you click here, you can see, click image view, you can see all these properties here to the right, as you can, if you hover over here in the attributes inspector, all of this, we can also access those in code, which is amazing because that allows us to create applications that are dynamic, that don't rely on the storyboard to add things to our screen. Okay, so that's the power of building applications because we are able to do such things. Okay, so okay, let's move on. So now what do we need to do? Let's go ahead and set up our hide cuteness here. So the hide cuteness will obviously hide our images. So what do we need to do? Let's go to hide cuteness. So instead of our hide cuteness pressed, we're going to say if, but before we do that, what we want to do, we want to make sure that this hide cuteness here, when the app first launch, we want to make sure that the hide cuteness is actually not showing. So like click on it and then let's open up our inspector here. Since our cuteness, make sure the cuteness hide cuteness button is clicked and let's go and hide it. Let's go at the bottom here say hidden. That's perfect. Now it's all hidden. Let's stop this and run one more time. All right. So as you can see, all we have is show cuteness here and hidden and hide cuteness is not there, which is exactly what we want. So what we want now is to be able to, when we click show cuteness, not only will these views populate and get the images as you can see here, but we want to show the hide cuteness. Now that way users can also have the option of hide cuteness. So let's do that. Let's go back to our code. Let's close our panel there. Okay. So now inside of our hide cuteness, and remember we have access to all of this at the top because we created the connections previously here. So inside here, we first thing we're going to do, we're going to say, check if this hide cuteness is visible or not. So we can say if hide cuteness button dot hidden is not so exclamation mark and equal. Remember that. Okay. Is not true. Then we want to do something. So we're saying if hide cuteness is not hidden, which means is showing, which also means that they have already clicked show cuteness here and everything is showing. We want to then add action to our hide cuteness. The action we need is kitty image view dot hidden is equal to true because we want to hide the kitty image view and we also want to hide the puppy image view. So hidden is equal true. So we'll go ahead and save this and see if this works. Go ahead and run. All right. So there we go. So let's see if this works. Click on show cuteness. There it is. 
but something is not showing here. Hmm, we made a mistake here. Let's see what's happening here. So we're saying here, we want this hide cuteness to show the moment that this everything is showing, the moment this is clicked, show cuteness. Ah, here's the problem here. Since the hide cuteness is always hidden here, we need to make sure when they click on the show cuteness to actually show the hide cuteness. Otherwise, it's never gonna show. So what I'm going to do here, we can say hide cuteness button dot hidden is equal to false. So if it's hidden, then it has to be unhidden, which means we need to show it. Only then will this work because here we say show cuteness, we go ahead and do this logic and also is going to go ahead and say, okay, hide cuteness has to show now. And then since that is showing, the hide cuteness is showing, we'll then be able to say hide cuteness check if hide cuteness is showing. If it's true, then we need to hide everything once that is clicked. All right, that sounds like a lot of things, but click there, let's run again. There it is, let's see how this will work right now. Okay, let's go ahead and say show cuteness and wonderful. And there it is, we have our images showing and we have our button showing as well. Now let's see if, if we hide cuteness, if that works. And there it is. Okay, let's go back to show cuteness. It's showing and we can hide, show and hide. Great. Now the other thing while we're here, let's say we want to be able to change the entire background of our application here when we hit hide cuteness. How can we do that? Well, it turns out that in order to access the entire background of our application here, if you look back, let's go ahead and open to the left here. Let's open this. If you look in this view controller scene here, you see this view here. As you can see, you can close all or open here, right? So this view here, so if you click on this view here, you can see all of this is highlighted. So this view here is the main view which holds all of these other views here. Image views, image view, button and button. As you can see here, we have the puppy image view, the kitty image view, show cuteness, hide cuteness. So all of them are inside of our view. So our view holds everything. Now, in order to get access to our view, well, what we can do, we can just say view, because Xcode knows that if you say view, you mean the entire screen, because that's the parent, that's the main screen that we're talking about here. So now we can actually access different attributes, different properties of our view. The one we want is the background. So we can say view dot, so access a property. We want the background, so that, there it is, background. And you notice the background here, it says UI color. So the UI color we've seen before is a class that deals with colors. So what this means is that in order for us to change the background color of your view, we need to use the UI color class. So just hit enter and say equal. And of course, we have to say UI color. And we can go ahead and for this case here, there's two options. We can go ahead and open parentheses and have all these different options here we can use, right? But for now, we are just gonna go and use a few colors that Xcode already provides for us. And in order to access those colors, we just go and say dot, so we're accessing it, and there's white color. Let's say we want to just have a red color, and there it is. You type red, and there's red color, and hit enter. Okay, so now we access, again, we access our view here, which is the entire screen here and we say, give me the background color property, and we, I wanna set it to a red color. But in order to access the red color, I need to go and fetch the UI color class, which has all of the functionalities I need to be able to get this red color here. And the other thing you can do whenever you want to learn more about a class, and of course we'll talk into more details about classes later. But if you want, if you're curious to know more about this class, you can always highlight it and hit the option key and then click on it and look at that. They give you all the documentation, all the description of what this class does, all right? This may not make a lot of sense now, but I promise you it will later. Great, so now we have that done. So let's save this and run one more time. All right, so let's see if this works. So show cuteness, okay, it's still working. Let's say hide cuteness. If we click hide cuteness, according to our code, this should all turn red, the background that is. So click that and Look at that, show cuteness again, and, but we have a problem now. Red is still there. We need to change that. So we wanna change, revert back to white. 
where should we do this? Well, it turns out we need to do inside of our show cuteness because that's when we click back, right? So we're gonna go ahead here and say view dot background color is equal to UI color, say dot white color. There it is, say enter, and there we have it. Save this, and let's run one more time. Okay, show cuteness. All right, there is show cuteness there, and let's hide it. It's all red, sad, and let's do it again, and back to white, and everything's showing. Great, wonderful. So congratulations, and I'm hoping you are starting to see the power we have here in code to do things with our application, right? So we are now able to dynamically, not only relying on the main storyboard, we are now dynamically getting attributes of our user interface components here and do things with them. Very, very nice. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.